in the precious name of Jesus Christ. This evening, I hope that there is enough illumination where you are sitting. All right. This evening, I'm speaking on the rising glory dash from generation to generation. The rising glory from generation to generation. Isaiah chapter 60 verse 1 to verse 3. He said, Arise, shine, for thy light is come, and the glory of the Lord is risen upon thee. For behold, the darkness shall cover the earth, and gross darkness the people, but the Lord shall arise upon thee, and his glory shall be seen in thee. And the Gentiles shall come to thy light, and kings to the brightness of thy rising. The Lord bless his word in Jesus name. This evening very very quickly. First want to understand. The rise. Of the glory. And number two. Want to understand. Secrets. Of the glory rise. Tonight, by way of introduction, I will draw your attention to three major things that bother on this subject. Number one, God is a God of action and motion. He's not a God who is static or stagnant. God is a God of action and motion. In Exodus chapter 14 verse 13 to verse 16. In the front of the Red Sea. Moses said unto the people. Fear ye not. Stand still. And see the salvation of the Lord. Which he will show you today. For the Egyptian whom you have seen. Today. You shall see them again no more forever. What did Moses tell them? Stand still. The Lord shall fight for you and you shall hold your peace. But the Lord overruled. In verse 15. And the Lord said unto Moses. Wherefore criest thou to me? Why are you telling the people to stand still? Speak unto the throne of Israel that they go forward. But lift up your rod. And stretch out thine hand over the sea. And divide it. And the children of Israel shall go on dry ground through the midst of the sea. I am the God of action, the God of motion, not a God of stagnation. Your theory is, is theologically accurate, but revelationally inaccurate. As spiritual as that instruction was, God overruled it. Say, don't tell the people to stand still when action is needed. When motion is needed. When it is time to go forward. God is a God of action and motion. Number two. God is a God of new things. New things. Isaiah chapter 43. And in verse 19. He said. Behold. I will do a new thing. God never runs out of new things. News never end in God. He never runs out of news. News never end in God. Thirdly, God is the God of increasing dimensions of manifestation. Increasing dimensions of manifestation. Increasing dimensions of manifestation. He outdoors himself all the time. He always does something beyond the last one he did. Increasing dimensions of manifestation. So in Proverbs chapter 4 verse 18. He said the path of the just is a shining light that shineth more and more. Unto the perfect day, not more and less. So.
So we serve the God of the more and more. In Psalm 84 verse 7 He said they shall go from strength to strength Every one of them in Zion appeared before the Lord So we have the God of strength to strength One level of strength to a higher level of strength Not a level of strength to a lower level of strength So bear this in mind We have the God of more and more And we have the God of strength to strength Also Romans chapter 1 and in verse 17 He said Wherein the, for therein the righteousness of God is revealed from faith to faith From faith to faith So we have the God of more and more We have the God of strength to strength We have the God of faith to faith One level of faith to another level of faith You know that faith is in levels Oh thou of little faith Woman great is thy faith And then Second Corinthians chapter 3 and verse 18 But we all beholding us in a glass The glory of the Lord We are changed into the same image From glory to glory From glory to glory From glory to glory As by the spirit of the Lord So we have more and more We have strength to strength We have faith to faith And then we have glory to glory Meaning that glory is in levels That is why he said The glory of the Lord has risen It has shifted level arise shine for your light is come for the glory of the Lord has shifted level the glory of the Lord has shifted level the glory of the Lord has shifted levels Ezekiel chapter 47 verse 2 all the way to verse 5 we, 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 now we had seen more, more and more strength to strength faith to faith glory to glory now we are seen from depth to depth then he brought, he brought me out of the way of the gate northward and led me about the way without unto the outer gate by the way that look at eastward and behold there ran out waters on the right side and when the man that had the line in his hand went forth eastward he measured a thousand cubits and he brought me through the waters and the waters were to the ankles he measured a thousand cubits again and brought me through the waters and now the depth has entered the knees the waters were to the knees he measured a, a, a thousand and brought me to the waters and the waters were to the waist level the loins after he measured a thousand meters and it was a river that i cannot over i can't swim over i couldn't pass over for the waters have risen somebody say risen waters to swim in a river that could not be passed over god is saying i have a move a dimension of unction that overtakes you overwhelms you that just swallows up you and swallows up a generation is God speaking to somebody here I see that kind of move about to happen in Africa about to happen in the nation where you are shout the loudest amen somebody say more and more strength to strength faith to faith glory to glory depth to depth it is rising Amen. How many of you have been to the beach before? Like the beach in Lagos or the beach anywhere? I'm sure what happens at the bar beach in Lagos happens in, in most of the beaches where you have the waves coming all of a sudden and then bam! If you stand at the, at, the, at the front of the beach, it was as if it was going to confront you, as if it was going to push you. And then like there's a spoken decree of God that the waves should not cross a certain level. And then it lands there. Th that wave you saw that ended at the Victoria Island in Lagos area, that wave traveled for thousands of kilometers. 5,000, 6,000, 10,000. It's coming. <sighs> As it is coming, it is coming in increasing strength. Increasing strength. Increasing strength. And then when the strength summits, when there is a synergy of the strength, it becomes an explosion. That is how the move of God is from generation to generation. From the days of Elijah, the days of Moses, it has been traveling. We are the generation that will see the crescendo. 
Are you hearing what I'm saying? It is waves upon waves upon waves. And that is why he said the glory of the latter house shall be greater than the former. That is why he said he has caused the former rain to come unto you moderately. But he shall cause the rain, the latter and the former in the same month and your floor shall be over, over on. Somebody get ready for a glory that is about to explode on our generation. Shout the loudest. Amen. I want to quickly go through the scripture and to let us know how the glory of God, the dealing of God, the action of God from one generation to another goes in increasing dimension. Example number one, look at rising glory dimension from Adam unto Christ. First of all, now, when Adam fell, God took a lamb or an animal, Genesis 3.21, killed an animal, skinned the animal, and used it to clothe Adam. That animal was beyond just clothing them. It was an atonement for them. It was a covering for their sins. So in the first, th the first time God will atone and help man it was one animal for a couple it shift, shifted from that level to the children of Israel in Egypt in Exodus chapter 12 verse 3 in Exodus chapter 12 verse 3 now it says speak to the children of Israel saying in the 10th day of the month they shall take to them every man a lamb according to the house of their fathers a lamb for a house God began with an animal for a couple and he moved to a lamb for a house then moved from there to the children of Israel in Leviticus chapter 9 verse 7 it became one lamb for a whole nation a sacrifice for a nation so you had a sacrifice for a couple and then a sacrifice for a, a household and then a sacrifice for a whole nation and then you move from there to John chapter 1 verse 29 and John said behold the Lamb of God that taketh away the sin of the whole world so where, where did God start from he started by making atonement for one person one couple then he moved by making an atonement for a household then he moved by making an atonement for a whole nation then from there he moved by, by making an atonement for the whole world in this case in the case of the whole world it was not an animal anymore it was a human being not just a human being it was God the son you saw what where God started and where he ended and this sacrifice that he did to show us that it was the same order of sacrifice that the high priest did in the Old Testament for Israel it was the high priest that handed Jesus for crucifixion the high priest was performing his duty without knowing it was his high priestly function and as a matter of fact, it was his last duty. Because after that, there will be no more sacrifice. That was why after that sacrifice, the veil of the temple tore into two. Because the veil was there, because only him could enter there. But after that sacrifice and the veil tore, it means assignment over. everybody could enter can you see how god moved by taking an animal for a house to taking jesus for the whole world what is it that makes us think that we must remain with what god did yesterday i am i am, I am that's why i told you because the theme of this conference is the rising glory if the glory does not rise for our generation we failed I'm taking a journey now please take your seat now if you look at the second example you will look at the life of Abraham Abraham the, the glory rose from Abraham to Isaac and from Isaac to Jacob as 
subsequent generations were coming, things were increasing. Abraham was a person who fought nations. Genesis chapter 14. You read from verse 14 all the way to verse 23. He was one person that fought nations. Then you shifted to Isaac. Isaac was a person that was bigger than a nation. He was almost a nation, but he was still a person. You, do, you see that in Genesis chapter 26 and in verse 16. Go from us because you are more and mightier than we. The Philistines were telling them. Then you move from there to Jacob. Jacob was not just a person that was bigger than a nation now. By Jacob's time, God has turned him to a nation. In Genesis chapter 32 and in verse 28. From Jacob to Israel is from a person to a nation. So God was shifting things from level to level. From level to level. Now, third example is the rise in glory from Moses to Joshua. Moses had a glory. Joshua had another glory. What was the glory of Moses? It was the glory of bringing the children of Israel out of Egypt. Performing the wonders that happened and bringing them out of Egypt. What was the glory of Joshua? It was the glory of taking the people into Canaan. Taking them into their destiny. And not just taking them in there, but allocating to them their portions. Moses tried. Moses went so far. But Joshua stepped into a realm that Moses couldn't step into. The plan of God is that the current generation should step into a dimension that the past generation did not step into. The plan of God is that the current generation should touch a glory that the past generation did not touch. Our challenge is that the current generation has not even neared or tasted or approximated to the glory of the last generation. We had A. a. Allen, William Braham, Jaco. And we saw all the things we, we, they walked in. Our problem is that we haven't reached there. People, many in the church have not reached there. Not to talk about stepping into what Jaco did not step into. The way we behave is as if God did the best in the past. Hey, hey. And God does not behave. He doesn't function. He won't be God. If he behaves like that, he won't be God. God does not reserve the best for the past. I don't know about you, but I want you to get angry. I want us to be provoked in the spirit tonight. As a body of Christ, as a church, as a people. If God, if the best happened in the past, something is wrong with the people of the present. What happened yesterday is not meant to be more than what should happen today. What happened yesterday is not meant to be more than what should happen tomorrow. The best is not in the past. The best is in the now. And the best is in the future. And in the name of Jesus, we shall step into that best. You believe that? Shout the Lord and say amen. Look at the glory rise. Fourth example. From David to Solomon. David fought battles. All right, let me, let me start with this. David laid up materials for the building of the temple. In 1 Chronicles chapter 29, if you read from verse 3 all the way, from, from verse, actually verse 1 all the way to verse 6, you will see the testimony of David talking about how he laid materials for the building of the temple. But he didn't build the temple. Solomon built the temple and built the temple in such a glory that people
people came from around the world including queens and kings to see the glory of Solomon David had the power to build it but God said not you it's your son there were those ahead of us who had the capacity to step into some realms but God said not you a generation is coming In my timetable, in my agenda, in my calendar, this realm, this face is reserved for those behind you. I guess that was why Jesus saw the man at the beautiful gate and passed him by and did not heal him until it was Peter. Was it because Peter was more anointed than Jesus? No. Because it wasn't time and it wasn't him. This particular miracle, my son, you can perform it. But it is reserved for your disciple. Why is it that we are not entering what is reserved for us? Are you ready for this? Why is it that there is, there is a realm of a mantle of power, of the apostolic, the prophetic, a mantle of supernatural wealth and resources that is reserved for our generation and yet we haven't stepped in. Why? But this is the one that is the most troublesome. All the battles that Solomon should fight, David fought it. All. Oh. Solomon had nothing to fight. In 2 Kings chapter 5 verse 4, he gave a testimony with his mouth. 1 Kings chapter 5 verse 4. He says, so, but now, the Lord my God has given me rest on every side so that there is neither adversary nor evil or current. My father fought Sisyphus battles, fought Amalekites, fought Philistines, fought Philly, fought everybody. Now I am only left to enter rest and manifest glory. Then why am I not? If Solomon saw the battles that David fought, he won't survive it. So God put David ahead of him. of this generation's priests and pastors and Christians can die the death of martyrs the way the martyrs died some were skinned alive for preaching they, some were burnt to stake some were sword Peter was crucified upside down Are you following what I'm saying here today? Because, I mean, God put them ahead to clear the way, clear the road and do all the things that we may not have been able to do so that we can step into a glory. We couldn't do what they, they did and yet we are not doing what we are meant to do. When I read this passage, in John chapter 4 verse 38 he said before you raise your shoulder I am sending you to reap that in a field where you have bestowed no labor other men labored you are just entering into their labors Archbishop B.A. Idahosa suffered on on suffered terrible things in this country for standing for the truth for saying that God can heal God can deliver God can prosper they labeled him all manner of names cocaine pusher all manner blood sucker all manner at the time where nothing was popular he fought it for you and me to come other men labored and you have just stepped into their harvest. 
Where Papa Yedeko came to the north, there was the north had no form and void. He was persecuted for saying that you can anoint somebody with oil. They say bottle of oil, they say it's occultic, it's demonic. Say blood sucking church. Suffered all manner of things. And then there are people ministering in Kaduna now. They don't know what, what Kaduna was at that time. What the north of Nigeria was at that time. In every country there are people like that. David Livingstone. Labor. In South and Central Africa. Buried his heart. Was it Malawi or Zimbabwe? Zambia. We entered their labors. And all that is requested of us is not to labor that type of labor anymore but to just step in the glory and we have not. The painful thing is that what despite their labor with their labor they saw very drastic things that the current day church have not even tasted not to talk of seeing something higher other men labored they never talked of salary. They never talked of driving of a car or living in anything like that. They just labored. And we are entered into their labor. Please take your seat. The kind of price they paid, God made them pay it for us to come now so that we can step higher into a Solomonic order of glory. And yet we haven't. Now, look at the glory rise from Elijah to Elisha. It's my fifth example. You know that Elijah did exactly, Elisha did exactly twice of Elisha's miracle. Sorry, Elisha did exactly twice of Elijah's miracle. Elisha, Elijah walked in the company of chariot of fire and horsemen of fire. Second Kings chapter 2 verse 11. My father, my father, the chariot of Israel, chariot, chariot, chariot of Israel and the horsemen thereof, the chariot of Israel, one chariot. Elisha walked with chariots of fire. In 2 Kings 6 verse 17. By the time it reached Elisha's level. It was not just one chariot anymore. And Elisha prayed and said. Oh Lord. I pray thee open his eyes. That he may see. And the Lord opened the eyes of the young man. And he saw. That's the servant of Elisha. And behold the mountain was full of horses. And chariots of fire. Round about Elisha. With his master. It was chariot of fire. With, this, with his with the next generation, it was chariots, chariots and horses of fire. The question is, the mantles that people like Archbishop Benson and Dahosa and those who have gone to be with the Lord Kenneth Hagin, the mantles that they carried, how much of it do we carry now? Do you understand? If what Elisha carried was multiple of what Elijah carried what percentage of what the people ahead of us carried what percentage of it are we carrying now is anybody troubled by this thought rising glory it rises that is the God we serve it rises Many people have convinced us that about certain things that is called success in life or success in ministry that has excluded us from reaching the realm we are meant to reach. And when we are out of touch with our history, we become out of touch with our destiny. Out of touch. That 
glory rose from Elijah to Elisha. And then my sixth example will be the rise in glory from John the Baptist to the master. You know the glory of John the Baptist? Matthew chapter 3 verse 1 to verse 4 In those days came John the Baptist preaching in the wilderness of Judea and saying repent ye for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. For this is he that was spoken of by the prophet Isaiah saying the voice of one crying in the wilderness prepare ye the way of the Lord make his path straight and the same John had his raiment of camel's hair and a leathern girdle about his loins and his meat was locusts and wild honey that was the glory of John John call it was lo localized in the wilderness houseless ministry was not beyond the wilderness just there even though people went to him from the city but he was in the wilderness that was the glory of his realm there was literally no accommodation in the wilderness for John he was eating locusts and wild on that was the glory John operated in but the master came he moved beyond the wilderness <laughs> he preached in deserts he preached at the seashore he preached in temples he preached in synagogues beyond that the master had a place to call his own now look at John chapter 1 verse 35 you, this is a very very funny story uh, and verse 42 35 to 42 again the next day after John stood, this John, and two of his disciples, he looked upon Jesus as he walked. He said, Behold, the Lamb of God. And the two disciples, two of the John's disciples, heard him speak. And they left John and followed Jesus. Then Jesus turned and saw them following and said unto them, What seek ye? They said unto him, Rabbi, which is to say, being interpreted, Master, where dwellest thou? Where do you live? Our master doesn't have where he lives. We have, we have suffered so much. Even though we know that he has a calling, but... <laughs> where do you live? Is there any difference between you and this other guy? And Jesus said to them, Come and see. They came and saw where he dwelt and returned. And abode with him that day, for it was about the tenth hour. He didn't stop there. You jumped too fast. I didn't ask you to jump. We are going in series. One of the two which heard John speak, one of the two disciples that followed him was Andrew. So Andrew was originally John the Baptist's disciple. <laughs> Andrew did not return. I believe the other one didn't return. And not only did Andrew follow the master, Andrew called the pillar of the disciples. Simon Peter, come. We have seen a glory that is sharp and higher and I'm, I'm sure the last time I invited you you didn't want to follow me to the wilderness but this one, come and see this one I, I know you will like this one I may talk about this later but the, our generation is waiting for a glory that will pull their attention our generation they are, we are waiting for they are waiting for a glory that will pull their attention and pull their attention the attention of their families that was John 
glory located in the wilderness. Glory limited in, in supplies. Then came a second glory of Jesus. Jesus moved higher in glory. And that attracted followership. Now, you move from there. You move from the glory of Jesus. And this is my example number seven now. There was a rise in glory from the master to the apostles. Somebody says, is, this, is that true? Yes, the master himself said it. In John chapter 14 verse 12. He said. Verily, verily I say unto you. He that believeth on me. The works that I do shall he do also. And greater works than this shall he do. Because I go to the father. And to what extent did the people do the work? Now, Jesus, John the Baptist was in the wilderness. Jesus was beyond the wilderness to the cities and so on but despite that his glory was still in the realm look at Matthew chapter 15 verse 24 see what he said when a Grecian woman came he said that Jesus answered and said I am not sent but unto the lost sheep of the house of Israel I have an assignment but it has a scope for now before I die my benefit is to the lordship of Israel. Only. No matter how interested I am. I am not about to preach to the Gentiles now. Everybody has this, their cycle. Everybody has his syllable. Every generation. It just, it's just, this is my cycle. But when he resurrected. He said, though I was located in Israel, all of you go into all the world. Mark chapter 16 verse 15. He said, I want you to step where I didn't step. Reach where I didn't reach. Do what I didn't do. Go in, in, into all the world and preach the gospel. Not only to the lost sheep of Israel now. Preach the gospel to every creature. That is the God I know. That is the God I know. The people who went ahead of us has done further than we are trying to do. Unlike Bible days when the people who came later went further. The people who came later went further. They are designed to go further. They are designed to go further in result. Go further in impact. Go further in manifestation. Go further. I, I see an explosion happening here tonight. Because I see an, a holy anger already being stirred up in the spirit of somebody. And if you are the one you say loud amen. amen. There was a rising glory from the master to the apostles. And then number eight is the rise in glory from the original apostles to Paul the apostle. The Peter, the James, the John, they had the realm of, of results they saw. But there is this further dimension that Paul the apostle had that they never had. In 1 Corinthians chapter 15 verse 9 and 10. 1 Corinthians chapter 15 and in verse 9 and 10. Paul the apostle said, For I am the least of the apostles. I am not even qualified to be called an apostle. Because I persecuted the church. Verse 10. But by the grace of God, I am what I am. And his grace which was bestowed upon me was not in vain. But I labored more than Peter. I labored more than John. I labored more than James. I labored more than Andrew. I labored more than Nathaniel, Bartholomew. I labored more than all these Judas. I labored more than them. Even though I was not there when they were with the master. I labored more than them. But not I. Yet not I. But the grace of God which was with me the 
Christ in glory. I'm going to go because I'm asking, seeing people asking, what do I do? In church history, and let me close with that example, the glory rose from the reformation. Martin Luther, he had the realm of glory. Came up with the judge shall live by faith. Then it went to the holiness movement. Holiness movement, John Wesley, Charles Wesley, John Fletcher. These were people who moved in a dimension of glory. John Wesley planted churches. John Wesley rode on horse, horseback. John Wesley please preached 40,000 sermons. Walked heavily for 60 solid years no, on broken walk, walk life. John Fletcher, associate of John Wesley, was a man who prayed until the wall of his room was stained with the breath of his prayer. Where he faced to pray had the stain on the wall. Then that phase passed and then came the Pentecostal movement, the early Pentecostal movement. William Seymour and then the Smith Wigglesworth. Smith Wigglesworth was there, John G. Lake. Those early Pentecostal people, they walked in some very heavy realms of glory. John G. Lake would pray for a, a, a horse that broke his leg and the, the, the horse would walk. He would pray for somebody whose eyeball was broken in an accident. And as he prayed, the pieces of the eyeballs gathered back and formed the eye back. Prayed for a, a child that was born with Torian carefully. Tent shaped kind of head. Laid his hand and the head reshaped. Reshaped back to normal. Don't have the time to talk about all that tonight. Those are the glories that passed before. John G. Lake was asked to pray for someone who was sick in Wales. He was in South Africa in Johannesburg. The person was sick in Wales and he was in Johannesburg. As he prayed in his, the person was mad, mental, in a mental asylum. As he prayed in his room in South Africa, suddenly he fell into a trance and then saw himself transported. Went out of the room, went above the clouds. And began to move like an aircraft. So he was seeing the mountains and seeing the, the way you just look at, at, the, at an aircraft. Next place he found himself, he found himself in the hospital and in the mental asylum. Went into the room and saw the man chained with chains. Laid hands on him, he became normal in the, in the trance. Next thing he, he found himself back on his knees. described this I see myself going on top of so and so place I'm flying I'm, I'm just moving across the mountains of this and that that same hour they made a call and the man was back to his mind the same moment From there you move on to the healing revivals. John Jill, uh, or the A.A. Allen, Jaco, or our Roberts, William Branham. Tent revivals. This was very massive. A.A. Allen was one of the favorites in those days. Allen had a meeting sometime. And uh, R.W. Schoenberg that you, many of you know or have heard was the song leader at that time. And a woman came and met R.W. Schoenberg. He said, I have driven many, many kilometers to be here. Please, can you take me to the man of God to pray for my child? And that child has some affliction. 
And I'll tell you about this shortly. The child was born deformed. Hand was fixed like this to the chest. Knees were fixed like that also to the chest. No fingernails. No eyeball. The mouth was out like the mouth. The tongue was out like the tongue of a frog. The child had like 30 something 36 deformities inside the body, outside the body, blind, deaf, dumb, nothing. Was born and the doctor said he can't live up to one year. But the child lived beyond one year by any miracle. And the woman drove all the way to the camp meeting. And now W. Shem and, 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 and um, Shem, Shem back said to the woman, if the man of God does not call your case out tonight, I will take you to him. The woman said, the money we have in the, for the hotel has, is exhausted. All that I have is just for one more day. Let him pray for the child so I can go back. Hello? And then, that night, Allen came up and said, I am about to take an offering of faith. He said, and he explained, what is an offering of faith? An offering of faith is an offering you have to use faith to give. That is, after you have given that offering, <laughs> you may be looking for money to do other things. And he put the basket, and the woman with this child was the first person to run out and drop the balance of her hotel bill and everything into the offering. One night left. And everybody else after they have given. Now, Allen stepped up and he began to minister. And he said, I am being carried in the spirit. And I'm going somewhere. So, I see myself around something that looks like a hospital. See, I'm entering like a place where babies are born. Oh, I just see that a baby has been born. And the baby was born with about 36 afflictions. See, and the doctor didn't give the child even up to one year to live, but the child has lived for more than two years now. I think about four years now, something. And I see the mother of the child. I see them driving. Oh, they are actually here in the parking lot. And they are in this service. Mother, come out with your child. God has 36 miracles for that child. Wow. This woman ran out with the baby hand like this. Everything to the chest. You know what happened? R.W. Schembach said the woman dropped the child on the ground. And Schembach opened his eyes. Say this time, I won't close my eye. I want to see what is happening. First thing that he said happened was the tongue that was out like the tongue of a frog went back into the mouth snapped on the spot as he prayed the hands stretched out legs stretched out fingernails were created under his eyes eyeball began to form in sockets that had no eyes as the prayer went on this child was on his feet child does not know his mother doesn't know his father child looked left and looked right for the first time and went in the direction of the mother that he has never seen and went to the mother and said mama for the first time the miracle of how he knew who the mother was and speaking everywhere went wild everywhere went wild People were crying. R.W. Shemba said, crutches were flying in the air. People were removing their braces and neck collars as they saw the miracle. It's something like, if that can happen, I don't have a problem. They removed their crutches, lifted it through it in the air and were walking and running. All manner of things were happening. Then he said about 14 people or 15, they were about sat on wheelchairs while all this was going on. He said, all of them looked at each other and said, what are we waiting for? Stood up all at once. He said, that day, 
he saw 100% miracle. 100%. There was not one person that was not healed. Not one person. This is a glory that happened before. We are meant to be in a glory that is ahead. That was the healing, the healing revival. In the days of the healing revival, they laid hands on people one by one. Or our robbers will pray for 10,000 people in one night, one by one. Then the charismatic revival came. Catherine Kuhlman was a fourth, foremost um, arrowhead of that revival. In that case, there was no more need for laying hands on people one by one. The power will touch you where you are. You stand up on the wheelchair where you are. You stand up from anything you are, that's wrong with you where you are. The, the anointing will be heavy in the climate from the front to the very back. If you sat there, you must feel something. That was a further glory beyond the glory. And all the other people came out of that, Benny Hinn and so forth. We are at the brink of another glory. We are at that brink. I believe that we are in those days where these afflicted people on wheelchairs, people on stretchers will come past a church and they just pass by and the person got out of the wheelchair got out of the stretcher and the dead just came back to life we are hearing testimonies of people in their homes being healed by divine encounters right now it is going to multiply in so drastic measure I want us to pray tonight Lord, I refuse to exist without walking in the glory of my generation. I refuse to exist without walking in the glory allocated for my generation. I refuse to be on earth without walking. Now, give me five minutes. Let me, let me, just, let me, let, let me just give one or two keys and then we'll pray. What is it that will help us now, what I'm saying is not just effective in the realm of ministries or pastoring or anything. It's in every realm. Financial realm, political realm. There, are, there is a glory dimension that is reserved for every generation. What do we do? Number one, we must accept the responsibility for the move and glory of God in our generation our own generation every generation is responsible for that generation we must accept the responsibility for the move and the glory of God in our generation Gideon as the angel where are the miracles that we heard about in time past the angel said that is why you are here where is Smith Wigglesworth? Say you are the Smith Wigglesworth of your day. Where is Allen? You are the Allen of your day. Where is John D. Rockefeller? The first dollar Christian billionaire in the history of the world. You are the Rockefeller of your day. He said, go in this thy might. That was Judges chapter 6, I believe verse 13 there about. Go in this thy mind. We must accept the responsibility for the move of God, for the glory of God in our generation. Verse 14. And the Lord looked upon him and said, Go in this thy might, and thou shalt save Israel from the hand of the Midianites. Accept, Lord, I am available. What you want to do if, for our generation, I am available for you to do it. Whatever you want, I am available. I am available as an instrument. I am available as your hand. I am available as your feet. We must accept responsibility for the move and the glory of God in our generation. Number two, we must refuse to pitch a tent around any previous move of God. Peter said, let us build a tent here. 
in Luke chapter 9. Let's build a tent here. One for you, one for Moses, one for Elijah. He said, no. No tent shall be built here. Because this is not the best thing God will do for forever. There is something more coming. And it came to pass as they departed from him. Peter said unto Jesus, Master, it is good for us to be here. And let us make three tabernacles. One for thee, one for Moses, and one for Elias. Not knowing what he said. We must refuse to pitch a tent around any previous move of God. We must stop acting as if the best is in the past. Number three. Let's use what happened before as a basis, a platform, or a landing pad for higher expectations. Let's use what happened before as a basis, as a platform, or a landing pad for higher expectations. Paul the Apostle says, forgetting the things that are behind and looking forward to the things that are ahead. Philippians chapter 3 verse 10 to verse 14. That means we must have some understanding of what happened before. Number four. Let us set our gaze resolutely at the things that are ahead. Meaning, we must be hungry for the things that are yet to happen. Let's set our gaze resolutely at the things that are ahead. We must be hungry for the things that are yet to happen. That is Philippians chapter 3 and verse 13. Set our gaze resolutely at the things that are ahead. Final number five. We must stand. On the prayer watch. I will stand upon my tower. We must stand on the prayer watch tower. To pray down. The needed glory. And to ask, also access the mind of God. For what lies ahead. We must stand at the place of prayer to pray down the imminent glory and also to access the mind of God for what lies ahead or the mind of God for what he wants to do for the hour you know it was as Jesus prayed in Luke chapter 9 verse 29 that the glory exploded as he prayed the fashion of his countenance was altered as he prayed there was a glory explosion and we should pray and we must refuse to be discouraged however long it takes we must pray Evan Roberts prayed for 13 years every year Lord bend us, Lord bend us Lord visit Wales, 13 years and then the revival exploded in 1904 in Wales. Revival was so massive until the, the animals, the mules in the mine, mine houses have to be retrained. Police stations were evacuated because crime reduced. But he prayed every year. He wasn't discouraged. We must refuse to be discouraged and refuse however long it takes until we see the move. And then, of course, Lord, what are you saying? I will stand up on my, on my watch and I will watch to see what he will say. What are you saying? What steps must be taken? What actions must be embarked upon? I refuse to be alive and not enter the glory that is due for my generation. There is one glory of the sun. There is one glory of the moon. And one star differed from another in glory. I refuse to be alive without seeing the glory that is due for my generation. I'm not going to hold anybody responsible. I hold myself responsible for the glory 
that must be seen. Open your mouth and let's begin to speak to God. Shut up. The glory that must be seen. The glory for my generation. The glory for our time. The glory for this season. The glory for this moment. I refuse to be alive without seeing. without stepping into the glory for my generation without stepping into your dimension for my generation without experiencing what you have reserved what you have in stock for my generation I am tired of your status quo. There's got to be more than this. I am tired of your status quo. There's got to be more than this. I am tired of the status quo. There's got to be more than this. Hey! I am tired of this level. I am tired. There's got to be more than this. I am tired of the status There's gotta be more than this. There's gotta be more. There's gotta be more. There's gotta be more than this. There's gotta be more. There's gotta be more. There's gotta be more. There's gotta be more than this. I am tired of the status quo. There's gotta be more than this. Urata Teliano. I am tired of the status quo. Hey, there's gotta be more than this. I've seen the God of wonders. What miracles for me? What we are man and pray, people. Those who will give them talents. This for prophet is good. The mantles of Elijah. Paul and Timothy. I want to see the power. I want to see the power. At one against side of man. Because I'm tired of the status quo. There's gotta be more I'm tired of the status quo There's gotta be more There's gotta be more There's gotta be more There's gotta be more A generation 
pressure is waiting. There's gotta be more. There's gotta be more. There's gotta be more. A generation is waiting. There's gotta be more. There's gotta be more. There's gotta be more. A generation is waiting. There's gotta be more. There's gotta be more. There's gotta be more. It's 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 got
God, what will you have me do? What you are calling me into? What do you want me? The responsibility that is upon me right now, what will you have me do? You are going to speak to God, Lord, what will you have me do? What will you have me do? As for seeing your glory in my generation, no devil can stop me. No power can stop me. The question is, what will you have me do? What will you have me do? Open your mouth and pray. What will you have me do? I am ready, Lord. I am ready to do what you want me to do. I am ready to hear you. I am ready to do your will. What will you have me do? What will you have me do? What will you have me do?
Miami up. The angel told Gideon, go in this thy might. Father, let the necessary might for the assignment of my generation be released. I make demands on the fresh release of your might, the fresh release of your help, the fresh release of your mercy to fulfill the assignment of my generation. I receive the fresh release of your help, the fresh release of your might, the fresh release of your help. Open your mouth and speak to God. I receive it right now in this session I see mantles falling I see fresh help and see fresh grace up we are out of pray <laughs>
morning is God is moving in your generation and you are standing and watching father please don't pass me by whatever you are doing at this time whatever it takes help me to be involved help me to be a part of your move a part of your glory wave a part of your move in this season lift your voice and speak to God whatever it takes
send your fire, Lord. Oh Lord, I need your fire. Finally, lift up your two hands, Father. The mantle for this glory. I am asking for it now. The fire to work now. Everything that is your assignment, business realm, there is a glory for it. There is a mantle realm for it. Music minister, a mantle for the next glory. Any any realm you are, pastor, church member, whatever you do, I need I, I need the mantle. I need fresh fire. I need the oil. Place your hand upon me. Lift your hands and say, Father, that mantle for the next level, I receive it. That mantle for that next level of the glory, that fire for the next level of the glory, I receive now. Open your mouth. Thank you, Master. In the name of Jesus. Leave those hands high. Ooh. 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 
An eruption, an explosion of revival in individual lives, families, churches, cities, nations. That's right. That's right. Lift your hands and whisper that name, Jesus. by the name Jesus seven times and the seventh time the first time he said a whisper this fifth six by the time it is seven feel free to exclaim like blind Bartimaeus Jesus and then and that time you place your hand on your head he will give you a very drastic visitation now lift your hands high lift your hands
and give him the praise Father we thank you we give you the praise and give you the honor blessed be your name in Jesus precious name take your seat briefly if you can different things have happened tonight different healings, different encounters, deliverances we'll take all testimonies tomorrow morning so that we can have the time to go be sober Take some time to pray tonight. But I saw visitation of nations, including this nation. Visitation, fire, rainfall, the move of God across nations. There were those that God gave clear revelation for this nation and for your nation. Just now. I like to take like five of such and then we'll establish them in prophetic declaration. God showed you the move of God exploding across this nation, across your nation. Quickly. One, two, and three, and four, and five. We can stop there now. The Spirit of that's right. Yes. It should be. All over the world, as the prophet said, it, as the prophet said, it should be all over the world. There's a mighty revelation of the glory of the Lord. As the All, all, all over the world, the spirit, the spirit of the Lord, of the Lord is moving. The all over the world, as the pro.